Prime Minister Imran Khan on Friday said the government will provide training of international standard to the staff of Panagas, the government-run shelter homes. Prime Minister Imran Khan said that while talking to special assistant on poverty alleviation, Dr. Sanya Nashtar on Islamabad, he directed the concerned authorities to provide all the necessary facilities to the people staying at Panagas. He said the Pakistan Tariqa and Saab government was setting an example by establishing model Panagas. The Prime Minister said philanthropists and overseas Pakistani would be joining the government in setting up model shelter homes. The special assistant briefed PM Imran on progress in establishing the model shelter homes. She told that Central Advisory Board of Panagas has been constituted and a four-member administrative board will be formed soon for every Panaga. She relayed the meeting that digital monitoring system would be started for every Panaga within a week, adding that the construction of Panagas would also be completed in a year. Hours after Prime Minister Imran Khan revealed that Pakistan was in talks with some tariq -e taliban Pakistan groups in Afghanistan to surrender, a major group on Friday announced a 20-day ceasefire with the Pakistan Army. In an audio message, Sadr Hayat, a senior commander of Hafiz Gul Bahadur Group of the TTP, told his deputies to suspend all kinds of operation against the government forces, mainly in the North Waziristan region until October 20. He urged TTP commanders to stay in their respective areas until further orders, said Anadolu Agency. However, the Hakimullah Mahsud group rejected the truce, urging its members to continue actions against the Pakistani forces. In a statement, a TTP spokesperson, Mohammad Khurasani, said that militant counterism had no groupings and denied that it had announced any ceasefire anywhere. A termination in conflicts between Tariq -e Taliban Pakistan fighters in South Waziristan and the army was proclaimed by the band group in a statement on Friday evening. The TTP statement said, Our leaders have asked all fighters to observe a ceasefire from today to October 20. The TTP stated that their leaders are involved in some secret talks without explaining any further. The development comes after the Prime Minister Imran Khan earlier announced in the day that the government is in talks with some groups of the TTP for decommissioning. PM Imran Khan speaking to TRT World's Ali Mustafa in Islamabad said, I think some of the Pakistani Taliban groups actually want to talk to our government. You know, for some peace, for some reconciliation. The coronavirus pandemic claimed 56 more lives across the country over the past 24 hours. Data issued from the National Command and Operations Center showed on Friday. In the last 24 hours, Pakistan also reported 1,411 fresh infections, taking a total number of virus cases to 1,246,538. The NCOC said that the total number of recoveries across the country stands at 1,170,590, while the number of active cases has risen to 48,163. The country's nerve center against the coronavirus said that after the deaths of 56 people over the past 24 hours, the nationwide death toll has risen to 27,785. Reportedly, Sindh is the most affected province of the country in terms of the number of virus cases with 457,928 infections, followed by Punjab, which has reported a total of 431,666 infections. Khabar Pakhtunkhwa reported a total of 174,017 coronavirus cases so far, while Balochistan recorded a total of 32,926 cases. Replying to Prime Minister Imran Khan's statement concerning Ban Tariq -e Taliban Pakistan, the opposition necessitated an immediate parliament session. PMLN Senator Irfan Siddiqui stated that keeping the government communication with TTP is not proper because this is a very delicate national issue. Negotiations in Nawaz Sharif tenure were approved by the parliament, he added. He further stated that ex-PM Nawaz Sharif himself had visited Prime Minister Imran Khan's house and informed him about the particulars of the talk. He said, Negotiations and general apology for the TTP without taking the nation and parliament into confidence raise many questions. This is a sensitive national issue and keeping secret this matter is highly inappropriate. Bukhari said that such stages will create a destructive image of the country at the international level. Prime Minister should inform the parliament about the ongoing talks with the TTP in Afghanistan, he said. Pakistan People's Party leader Shazia Mari stated that PM has also stated that he would pardon the TTP in case of submission, reproving such a big step without taking the parliament into assurance. What basis and on what terms are negotiations being held with the Taliban? She asked. Amid the ongoing criticism against Pakistan, Danish Foreign Minister Yebek Ufford said on Friday that Islamabad has played a responsible role in promoting peace in the region, particularly in Afghanistan. According to Radio Pakistan, Ufford was addressing a joint press conference with Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi in Islamabad after holding a delegation-level talks at the Foreign Office. Denmark's top diplomat emphasized that Pakistan is an important country for ensuring security and stability in the region. He also thanked Pakistan for its support in the evacuation of foreigners from Kabul following the Taliban takeover. The Danish Foreign Minister said that Islamabad and Copenhagen have a long and strong bilateral relationship and they plan to strengthen it further in areas of trade and energy. President Dr. Arif Alvi has urged the need for promoting higher education to put the country on the fast track of socio-economic development. He underscored the need for enhancing the volume of hybrid education, which was cost-effective and would help increase the number of highly educated and skilled professionals in the country. The President made these remarks during a briefing on the Foundation University Islamabad at the Ewan Sadar. Foundation University Islamabad President Wakar Ahmad Malik, Rector Major General Nasir Dilawar Shah and Foundation University Director Major General Professor Dr. Javed Khali Kansari attended the meeting. The FUI President briefed the meeting about the remarkable job done by the university in promoting higher education, including in the fields of health science, engineering and technology. He said that the FUI was contributing towards the development of human resources through excellence in education, research and innovation. The meeting was appraised that during 2015 to 20, 8,916 students have graduated from the university in various degrees programs 
and the FUI was focusing on increasing the number of PhD graduates. The Lahore Accountability Court indicted Shehbaz Sharif's wife Nusrat Shehbaz in a money laundering reference. Money laundering reference against Shehbaz Sharif family was heard in the Accountability Court. Hamza Shehbaz and the other accused appeared in court while the court granted Shehbaz Sharif's request for pardon. His lawyer Chaudhry Nawaz advocate said the doctors had advised Shehbaz Sharif to rest and he could not appear before the Accountability Court due to ill health. Accountability Court Judge Naseem Work indicted Nusrat Shehbaz through his representative and summoned NAB witnesses for testimony at the next hearing. The Accountability Court adjourned the hearing on the money laundering reference till October 18. The completion ceremony of the Vocational Training Institute under the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor was held on Friday in Gwadar. As an important project for public well-being, the Gwadar Technical and Vocational Institute was constructed by the China Harbour Engineering Company with an aim to meet the urgent need of the locals in Gwadar and promote the sustainable development of the area. Addressing the ceremony, Chairman of the Gwadar Port Authority Nasir Khan Nashani expressed his gratitude to China for the grant of the project and to Chinese engineers and workers who have completed this institute ahead of schedule despite the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. Pakistan has benefited a lot from the energy and transport infrastructure projects under CPEC while the socio-economic projects of the corridor are also very important for the South Asian country Kashani said adding that the Gwadar Port Authority will make the best use of the institute with comprehensive planning to offer the locals training opportunities to enable them to get better jobs and live a better life. In a video message Chinese ambassador to Pakistan Nong Rong said that completion of the institute marks a great milestone of CPEC and is also a long expected event for the Gwadar people. During its construction the project provided more than 1000 jobs to local people. After completion it can accommodate 360 trainees at one time and provide training opportunities for at least 1000 people every year said Nong. The institute will serve as an incubator for high quality and skilled workers for Gwadar and even Balochistan after functioning added the ambassador. Prime Minister Imran Khan on Friday facilitated the nation on the upward economic trajectory as the federal board of revenue collected 1395 billion rupees in the first quarter against the target of 1211 billion rupees. I congratulate the nation on FBR's achievement of collecting 1395 billion rupees in quarter 1 of fiscal year 2021-22 against the target of 1211 billion rupees the prime minister tweeted Imran Khan mentioned that the situation was reflective of growth in revenues by 38% this represent a growth of 38% in revenues over the same period last year he said the sensitive price indicator base inflation for the week ended September 30 2021 for the combined consumption group witnessed a decrease of 0.10% compared with the previous week the Pakistan Bureau of Statistics reported the food commodities that contributed in the decline in the weekly inflation included tomatoes down by 12.57% onions 6.75% bananas 3.67% wheat flour back 2.33% sugar 1.73% gourd 0.92% pulse moong 0.71% chilies powder 0.57% pulse mash 0.27% and pulse gram 0.26% on a year on year basis the commodities that witnessed major decline in the prices including tomatoes 50.52% pulse moong 29.75% potatoes 26.69% and onions 21.66% meanwhile the commodities that witnessed an increase on a week on week basis including lpg 2.27% potatoes 1.73% and garlic 1.61% this week netflix smash show squid games had been in the news for all the right reasons however a lot of social media users have criticized the show for its stellar english translation work of the south korean series which is currently netflix number 1 series and is being dubbed as the streaming platform's largest show ever yomi mayer a south korean comedian and fluent speaker took to social media to trash the translation effort in a tiktok video she explained if you don't understand korean you didn't really watch the same show the dialogue was written so well and zero of it was preserved referencing to the character of Han Mio Mayer said her lines were constantly botched adding that she cussed a lot and it gets very sterilized Gabriel Salazar known as at Gabe not Babe to his 2.2 million TikTok followers has died at just 19 years old according to statements from the Texas Highway Patrol and Zavala County Sheriff's Office he was the driver convicted in a police chase on Sunday September 26 which caused a deadly car crash that killed himself and three passengers authorities stated that Salazar was driving a 2014 Chevrolet Camaro north of US Highway 83 near La Prairie or Texas around 1:25 a.m. according to the sheriff's office statement a deputy overheard a Crystal City Police Department officer pledged a traffic stop. The officer then stated that he was in active pursuit of a white Chevy Camaro. The deputy tried to help organize a tire deflation device but was unsuccessful, according to the department. The deputy said he later heard a CCPD officer's advice that the vehicle had rolled over and that it was fully engulfed in flames. Salazar, who was from San Antonio, suffered injuries and was announced dead on the scene. Chairman Pakistan Cricket Board Ramiz Raja has met the chairperson and chief executive of the first boards here at National High Performance Center, in which he shared his vision that revolved around grassroots cricket. Ramiz emphasized on a quick resumption of school and club activities as well as infrastructure upgradation so that the youngsters receive the best playing facilities and environment to display and demonstrate their talent. PCB chairman Ramiz Raja said, "The grassroots cricket level tier deserves attention as it had been neglected field for years, resulting in marginalizing our growth canvas. Under my watch, cricket nurseries will have a permanent importance. I acknowledge and appreciate the good work done at the provincial level by the first board and look forward to continuing the work collectively to bring the change in Pakistan cricket landscape." Mountaineer Sirbaz Khan has
has achieved another feat on Friday after he became the first Pakistani to conquer nine of the world's 14 highest peaks, Anadolu Agency reported. The Hunza-based climber summited Mount Dulagiri, the world's seventh tallest mountain located in Nepal, the Alpine Club of Pakistan said in a statement. The massive, which forms part of the Himalayan's mountain range, is widely regarded as one of the most difficult mountains to summit, owing to its steep sides and extremely cold climate. Khan was part of the 19-member SST Dolgari Expedition 2021 Autumn Expedition. The expedition was part of Khan's ambition to climb all 14 peaks over 8,000 meters across the world. Reportedly, the mountaineer had previously climbed eight peaks above 8,000 meters, including Mount Everest and K2, the world's largest and second tallest mountain respectively, the statement added. There are many painful incidents with women while working in the kitchen, but now a video of women working in the kitchen has taken social media users by surprise. A video of a woman working in the kitchen is being shared on the social media platform Twitter, in which it can be seen the woman's hair caught fire during the work. At first, the woman did not even notice that her hair was on fire. It took the woman 45 seconds to understand what had happened to her. The video shows a woman standing in the kitchen working by the stove and her hair caught fire as she bent down to collect food. It can be seen in the video that the woman did not immediately notice a fire in her hair and she continued to work at the same speed. However, after a while when the woman felt the heat of the fire, she immediately extinguished the fire with her hand. Due to the timely extinguishing the fire, the woman was safe from any damage, otherwise the situation could have been serious. Bowl Briefs ki video sabse pehle dekhne ke liye. Bowl Briefs ke channel ko subscribe kare. Aur bell icon per click karna na bhoolein.